Okay, now what I've done, Gail actually asked me to do this. Uh, this is my, my economic policies. So this is what I, if you want to go and vote for a political party, look for a political party that's got the following included in the, in the, um, ec in the economic policies. So I'm just going to go through some of them. First one is, and the most single most important thing, if you want an economy to work, you have to protect private property rights. Private property rights, protection of private property rights must be right on top of your policy document. Protect private property rights. And the reason why you need to protect private property rights is for the second reason. And that is that you have to allow for free trade because free trade is a free lunch. Free trade means that the, the buyer and the seller both gain from a transaction. That means you create value out of nothing. But you cannot trade if you don't own something. So that's why free trade is important. And of course, you can see what the ANC has been doing on that. Privatization, we need to privatize. In fact, we are privatizing everything. We are privatizing ESCOM. We are busy privatizing ESCOM. Law and order, that is a disaster. As we all know, we just saw the most recent law and order report. And by the way, law and order is one of the primary functions of the state. They have to give law and order. They have to protect, protect us. That's why the state is there, primarily, to protect us. Um, I would, if I, was, uh, if I was in power, I would certainly prioritize primary education. Primary education is far more important, far more important than secondary and tertiary education. Primary education is really what matters. If you compare South Africa's primary education to the rest of the world, we're doing absolutely horribly. But you have to professionalize the civil service, no cadre deploy deployment, and all that sort of nonsense. Certain infrastructural development, I will do a certain infrastructural development, with that I mean things that are typical, what economists call collective goods. Th things like, for example, highways is a good example of that. So the state can be involved in certain infrastructural development, but those things that are typically uh, things that the state is supposed to be getting involved in. Um, so the fiscal accounts needs to be stabilized. I'll get to that just now because this is what the presentation is about. Um, energy security, and I'll get to that as well. And then if I was in a position of power, I would reduce our inflation target band from 3 to 6%. I'll bring it down not to a band but to a point target, probably initially to 2% and later to uh, initially to 3% and later to 2%. And I will also get rid of all foreign exchange regulations. I mean... If you want to take money out of South Africa, I do this. I'm an asset manager. So I take money out of South Africa and I have to apply. I have to apply. I have to fill in a form, an application form to take my own money out of the country. I mean, can you believe that? I mean, do they think I'm a child? No. All right. So let's just get to, to, the, to, the, to ESCOM. How to fix ESCOM. What needs to happen to ESCOM? And this is what is happening, by the way. It is going to happen. He's just not, uh, he's not saying this as much. What we need to do with ESCOM, we have to restructure ESCOM, which means that, the, that you have to get rid of a lot of overheads, a lot of debt, uh, a lot of uh, expenses at ESCOM, which means a lot of people must lose their jobs. And that is what is going to happen. It also means that all those, especially local authorities, that suppose that's in arrears, with uh, their accounts to ESCOM, that they will, must pay their accounts. You cannot write off es uh, Soweto's debt. You cannot do that. You must force those local authorities put to pay their debts. It, it also means that you will probably have to keep on using coal, at least for the for next couple of decades. You can't phase coal out completely. So yeah, you will have to continue using coal as a source of energy. And it also means that you have to start selling off a lot of assets at ESCOM. Those, those are the kind of things that actually are going to happen now. But the Minister of Finance can't say that. And if you go through the budget speeches of the Minister of Finance, there are two requirements before he takes over the ESCOM debt. The one is they have to concession out all the power stations to the private sector. They are privatizing the operations of ESCOM. The second thing is they have to appoint an international some fancy organization, not a local one, an international organization that they have to go and evaluate the, the, uh, the power stations in South Africa and to give a recommendations on how the things need to be implemented and restructured and so on. If you don't do this, I'm not going to take over your debt. That's what the Minister of Finance said yesterday. So he is privatizing ESCOM 
but it's a backdoor kind of privatization that is happening. The same thing happened at South African Airways. The same thing is currently happening at the post office as well. Okay, that is actually good news. So that's what I meant with that. And uh, yes, I'll get to the fiscal accounts just now. So this is what you need. Have a look at this. this these, these are my macroeconomic policies. And have a look at these. And if you agree with me, pick a political party that, uh, that stand for these kind of things and vote for that political party.